what's going on everybody welcome to the crypto brew show where we are drinking brews and talking about it it is september 4th 2018 coming back from holiday weekend here in the united states it's great to be back and jojo how you doing well uh i'm definitely not in labor anymore but i'm <laughs> but i'm drinking a little Oktoberfest, 903 Mars in Oktoberfest. Thanks for the beer of the show today. So stick around and find out a little more, guess. Nice, nice, nice. And for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Labor Day is the holiday that uh, Joe is talking about. I know some of you might not be from the U.S. Rowan, what's going on? What up, Cryptoverse? Back, back in Texas. Very bittersweet, but all good man i'm ready to talk some crypto i'm drinking the raw and sons oktoberfest it's out of fort worth my hometown it's a mars and lager 6.7 percent nice bring it on nice 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 all righty well let's go ahead and uh, hop right into it to our disclaimer the information provided on the show does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice. Crypto Brew Show is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Conduct your own due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Hashtag Nafamu, not a financial advisor, my own opinion. And of course, hashtag BYOB, we did, uh, did you? Moving on to stay of the market, stay of the market, stay of the market. Global market cap sitting at $238 billion. 24-hour volume of 12.9 billion and a Bitcoin dominance of 53.16%. Sitting at the top, as always, Bitcoin at $7,362, up 4.1% in the last week. Ethereum sitting at number two at right below 300, $285, down 2.76% in the last week. Sitting number three, XRP Ripple down 5%, sitting at 33 cents. Bitcoin Cash. At six hundred twenty-five dollars, up eleven percent on the seven-day, and of course EOS at five, also up eleven percent, sitting at six dollars and forty-six cents. Moving on over to our gainers and losers, Jojo. What it does it look like over there? All right. So up at the top of the charts, this is one thing that we're never going to do for you. We're not going to keep you in the dark. But Bitcoin Dark is rising to the top. Up 67.13%. I know Charlie said some point this week it actually was up 300% or something stupid like that. What do you think is going on with that, Charlie? Pump and dump. <laughs> All right, but anyways, below that, we've got Smart Mash up 32.0% in the uh, past 24 hours. And uh, we got to give credit to credits up 18.52% in the past 24 hours as well. And... At the top of the losers chart, CoinDash once again at its same price action. I'm just gonna start blocking out always. I'm just gonna start blocking that out. It's, right? the, same, yeah. it's the same dang thing every week. <clears throat> and then we've got top top two. You know we make a lot of jokes about some sagging boobies with this coin, but um, Charlie actually says that this is a, a pretty legit project. Um, so, did you know anything about the project or no? I, else? Well, I, I very briefly went over it. Maybe we can go over it in a uh, in a future episode. But uh, it's definitely more legit than the credit that we're giving it at the moment. And that is credit as in vocal credit. We're not actually giving the titties credits coins. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then we've also got GX shares on there down 11.32%, but not too much going on. A lot of stuff starting to correct um, from the initial pumps and like the drive of the market. And, uh, you know, it's starting to look good. And uh, I hope we have another run up here before we know it. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's get on with the rest of the show. Let's do it. All righty. Crypto heat map. We, uh, are looking right around even even right now uh bitcoin's up ethereum's down a little bit xrp's down a little bit bitcoin cash about even so uh not even we're still moving we're still on the up and up we're still on the up and up which is good to see good to see let's go ahead and jump over to market news headliners our first article today is uh, 
Australia will develop a nationwide blockchain platform. This one comes from CCN.com. Hey, this sounds like a, a legit country doing some blockchain things. Um, no offense to maybe some of the other countries. <laughs> but uh, what, what do we think about this article, Joe? Um, I want everyone to go ahead and start calling uh, Australia the Jeffersons. Because when they were once down under, now they're moving on up with a country blockchain. All right. So my biggest thing with a lot of these companies, these countries out there, is the ones that are going to be adopting this for their future and current trends are going to have the leg up. And I keep saying that these are going to be the powerhouses come the future. So Australia, country to look out for? Maybe. What are your thoughts, Ron? Uh, I mean, I think this just kind of goes with the flow of where, where blockchain is going, like long term. And a uh, little fun fact here. So Australia has, as far as like countrywide, they have the third most blockchain patents in the world. Uh, China's first, U.S. is second, Australia's third. And that, there's a couple of cool projects that, uh, that I am you know, involved in that are out of Australia. I think this is great news, and this speaks to it further speaks to the legitimacy of blockchain. Yep, I think. Uh, I mean, one thing I pointed out there in the slide is uh, that one of the quotes by uh, Paul Hutchinson says, "Blockchain will be to transactions what the internet was to communication," and uh, I think I could probably speak for both of you guys. I think that is something we could all agree on. Um, blockchain is going to be huge it already is getting huge and uh it's pretty interesting to, again to see it's, it's great to see countries just saying all right here we go i mean not necessarily cryptocurrency but just blockchain as a protocol as a technology we're moving forward boys and crypto will just tag along tag along um so yeah absolutely all right let's go ahead and uh, jump over to our Next article here. This one comes from Cointelegraph. Report. CBOE to launch Ethereum futures trading later this year. For anyone that doesn't know, the CBOE is the ones that launched the Bitcoin futures earlier. Was it earlier this year or was it the in 2017, late 2017? I don't remember now. But yeah, um, yeah the January rocket ship, that was right when futures went into play. All right, fair enough. Well, what are, what are your thoughts on this? I, I know you uh, you mentioned the flippening. <laughs> you yes. you and your flippening. The flippening. I don't even know if et Ethereum is going to be the flippening, but I think that is like a long term, like down the road, that's going to happen. But anyway, uh, so CBOE, legitimate, you know, good stuff. And they're just, like I said, they're the same one that had the Bitcoin futures at the beginning of the year. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for this because I feel like it's going to kind of give the market a, a little kick, a little boost. And maybe the people who have uh, been curious, been crypto curious, but have, uh, they, they just haven't quite, you know, stepped in yet. Maybe this will be uh, the thing they need because there's so many negative stories with Bitcoin and it, you know, for, especially for like the older generations, like, when you hear on the news, Bitcoin is being used to fund terrorism and crap like that. What are, you know, th their opinion of Bitcoin is forever tied to that. So maybe this Ethereum will be what crypto needs to get some of those people into crypto. Fair enough. Fair enough. What are your thoughts on that, Joe? Well, um, I mean, I think Roan actually said it pretty eloquently and like, that's exactly what it's going to be like. I think this is going to help drive a little bit of force for us, but, um, you know, we also saw what happened after the futures hit, you know, things rose up, shit hit the fan and then we plummeted and hit pretty hard. So do you guys think that something like that, maybe we should start to prepare for a correction? Um, is there anything that we could have learned from the last um you know bear market or the one that we're currently in 
Well, I mean, with that, I mean, I want to hashtag Nafamu. <laughs> Two, correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. So I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if the the price is, really has anything to do with it as far as, I mean, the, the importance of this article uh, when it comes to, I mean, again, it's it's things moving forward. Things are moving forward, and as, as far as people that still have a bad stigma, and as far as people that just listen to the media these days, like, whoever listens to the media these days and doesn't do a little of their own research behind whatever the hell the media is spewing, um, I mean, that's on them. I couldn't care less about those people. Although, you know, whatever. I could go... <laughs> Quote unquote, what, are you, what are you talking about those people <laughs> what do you mean those people um, but so- yeah I, there's something else too just to kind of piggyback off of that um, I'm sure a lot of people saw in the headlines talking about those people um, they put out that um, just a uh, market opportunity not market opportunity but just seeing the market and the overall analysis uh, Amazon hit a trillion dollar market cap today just that one company and there are over 1,500 coins and projects on the blockchain space right now in the crypto coin market. So plenty of people should just see that as an opportunity. Hashtag Nava Hey, <laughs> <clears throat> right, that is a great point. I like it. I like it. All righty. Moving on to our next article here. Crypto credit cards are inevitable. That's a strong word. Uh, this one comes from Medium, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think we I mean we already see crypto debit cards floating around. Uh, a lot of them, like 10x and Smart, and I mean, a lot of the currency coins have cards that you could use their currency on. So, what do you guys think of a crypto credit card versus just a regular old like prepaid debit card? That's kind of floating around now. Joe, we'll start with you. Uh, Ron, you want to go ahead on this one, man? What do you got? I saw you were chomping yeah. at it. I mean, <laughs> I was just going to say there there are already uh, crypto collateralized loans. Um, I can't remember the the blockchain that's doing that, but but it's all it's functioning right now. It's already working. People was that salt? Loans off of it. I think no. I think that one's MakerDAO, isn't it? That's already on Maker, that type Maker of system. Dow. Yeah, which yeah. Is on Ethereum, um, and they actually had like when, when the market hit bottom, you know, a while back, they had some issues. But you know, hey, that's that's crypto. That's what it is. But anyway, you know, going back to this, so whether these crypto credit cards are uh, collateralized or not, um, I think this is great because there are so many of us who who have. Uh, crypto and aside from just letting it sit there as an investment you know w- we may not have a, a functional use for it because we're not actively using the blockchain that the utility coin is associated with so i think that this provides kind of that it's opening that door to you know what crypto can be down the road i mean if you ask me you know credit cards are going to go away completely once crypto does take over um but that being said, with the crypto, you can swipe right or swipe left. Either way is good. <laughs> um, well, with that being said, uh, question for you, Joe. Do you think like crypto credit cards will catch on more? Do you think uh, accruing debt via crypto? One, I mean, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> I should not going to ask you whether it's smart or not, but. Um, do you think, well, I guess my question is, do you think the, the ones that have their own, you could use your own currency on, or do you think the cards that have multiple currencies that you can use on one card, what do you think is better? And are you going to use them? That was a lot of questions. I'll let you just answer whatever you want. (laughs) Well, no, no, I mean, I completely understand where you're getting at. And my major thing is, as far as these credit cards are concerned, based off of blockchain technology is the only ones that are going to work are those that do have the collateralized loans or a system set up like that. In essence, the banks of the chain, um, those are going to be the ones that we're going to be able to utilize a credit-based system off of because they are the ones that have 
a stable type currency. Um, like, um, you know, throwing out my old dear friends, uh, Aurora Dow. Um, hopefully if they get their platform uh, in the works and get it all set up, the stable coin, the Boreal, based off of their snow globe system, is gonna be a great asset for maintaining a credit-based system because it's stable. Uh, and that's one of the things like if you have a whole multitudes of the top 100 currencies on your credit card, like you swipe and you pay for something in fiat or you pay for something on, on that system where you can pay for uh, with Bitcoin and you pay for it and that same like 20 or so dollars worth of Bitcoin that you actually spent money on a month down the road or whatever, when you go to pay it off, could be worth less, worth half. So now you're paying double the amount of Bitcoin for something that wasn't even that cup, that price. So there needs to be stability. True. I could go the other way too, where the Bitcoin doubles. So, or with the crypto doubles, then you're paying half the amount. Which, which is true. And I completely understand that. And I, I like the idea of being able to do that, but uh, do you trust, do you, do you trust run most modern Americans to make those financial decisions? Or do you think that they're going to cause us to be in a fiscal slump, just like the housing bubble? I mean, that, that's, that's what I like about crypto is that I get to be in control of that instead of, and, and you know what, we don't know, we don't know what the U S dollar or the U S economy is going to do either. I mean, the last recession we had was manufactured by one industry and they literally crippled the entire economy. I don't, I don't see that happening with Bitcoin. Well, I mean, the major, the major thing with that, um, it, like that tire market that crippled the economy, the only reason that that market existed was consumeristic behavior. And if people weren't willing to spend the four or $500,000 to buy a house they didn't need, that wouldn't have happened. Okay. Little... So how do, we, how do we change our social expectations to create a more consumer friendly capitalist economy based off of proper infrastructure? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, capitalism is not consumer friendly. I don't know, we could get into this. I was gonna say we so could deep. we could go off on this tangent yeah. for quite a while. So um, maybe we'll, we could talk about that another time. Just real quick, hashtag Navamu, hashtag not a sponsor, and hashtag uh, modern American. We'll go with that. All right. Anyway, moving on to the next article, which kind of ties into it. Uh, don't you guys go go back into that uh, that uh, debate there? But crypto wallet Abra announces direct transactions from EU banks in SEPA. So interesting. This one comes from Cointelegraph. We have a crypto wallet app functioning that has a fiat gateway that allows you to put your fiat in and exchange it for one of the 28 current cryptocurrencies that they offer right through their wallet. And now they're going to allow all these European Union states, along with Andorra, Iceland, can't say that one, Monaco, Norway, San Marino, and Switzerland, whole 35 member states now have the option to download Abra and use it and put their fiat in. Super easy. So what are your thoughts on that joke? Uh, I've got two words, my friend. Abra Cadabra. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, seriously, we've been looking for fiat entries, uh, a way to get away from Coinbase uh, transaction fees for a long time. And since it is the only one source that we've been able to get into, especially when the market was booming, and servers that they had could not handle the load. So we need multiple outlets and we need competitive forces against Coinbase. So I think anything like that, that we can get into fiat currency, it's great. So I like this. Y'all know Bitrex also has fiat fiat pairs now. Mm -hmm. And doesn't uh, Binance as well? Or at least they were working on it, I thought. Uh, I 
I know that. Yeah, they're working on it. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's super interesting. Again, it's super easy. I download the app. Uh, I haven't actually messed around with it too much, but I mean, it's it works. And yeah, it, it just having an easy way to get your fiat into crypto through one app without having to jump through a site to an exchange to a wallet to this to that to the other they're making it easy and that's what we need that's what we need so we'll see i like it all right next and last article today uh, how about walmart chocolate bitcoins six bitcoins for a dollar when's the last time we saw six bitcoins worth a dollar you know what i'm saying so uh apparently walmart is offering chocolate bitty coins what are your thoughts on that run that better be some free range grass-fed chocolate <laughs> for a dollar for six of them that's mm-hmm. ridiculous <laughs> jojo what do you got um i'm just upset when it's a chocolate coin, I can't bounce it off a table and hear that nice, amazing cling, 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 cling. Can't play quarters with it? No. But it's all right. I like it, though. I mean, this is a really cool thing that's coming out. Uh, Walmart having something like that. Bitcoin's actually starting to become mainstream. And uh, last week, even uh, Eminem's new album, he was rapping about biddies. So, um, so some cool stuff out there. I think this is just... Blanketing the market with the saturation of cryptocurrency, and it's here to stay. I mean, yeah, I like. I mean, the biggest pull away from this I wanted to to touch on was the fact that this article we're talking about Bitcoin in a completely different light. Like we're talking about Bitcoin chocolate. Like it's not about the price. It's not about whether it's a bubble. It's not about this or that as a scam, a pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme, whatever. It's just Bitcoin chocolate, and it's awesome. And with all the Walmart stores out there, uh, people are going to see these. People are going to buy them. Kids are going to buy them. Kids are going to get interested. I mean, this is just throwing out the brand even more. And I think that's a a really good thing for the space as a whole. So that was my my takeaway on that. But, yeah, absolutely. We just hope there's not some kind of like horrible recall on the Bitcoin chocolates. <laughs> oh no, that's their <laughs> that master be, plan. Be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, they mentioned the uh, the the company behind them, so we'll we'll, we'll tack we'll tack. Uh, around they can't recall the uh, Bitcoin chocolates because uh, the Bitcoin chocolates are immutable. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh... Huzzah! Unlike Ethereum, good thing they're not Ethereum chocolates. You know what I'm saying? Okay, anyway. Sound like they would be a lot safer. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the beer of the week. Hello, uh, 903 Oktoberfest. JoJo, uh, what is this beer you speak of today? All right, so we got 903, a uh, really, really awesome beer out of uh, Sherman, Texas, you know. Kind of just like an unknown here in Texas. I've never actually even really heard of 903. Uh, but surprisingly enough, this brew, extremely delightful. Um, one of the best uh, Oktoberfest that I've had this year. Um, super, super malty, like a traditional style uh, Oktoberfest. But that sweetness factor that a lot of these other Oktoberfests are really pushing out it's just not here with this one. Um, so you get all of the flavor, not much bite. You actually have hardly any bitterness with this at all. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those uh, good all-around beers. And um, I think uh, Sherman, if they can keep dishing out some beers like this, they've got a good uh, good horizon on them. So Cheers, good me. on you. Cheers. Cheers. Lahayam. Cheers. <laughs> Nice. Well, if you see uh, 903 Oktoberfest on the shelves, give it a go. That has kind of been our MO lately. Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest. When are we going to Germany, boys? (laughs) 
They got a blockchain in Germany? Yeah, of course they do. We're going. We're going. All right, question of the week. Question of last week, actually. Me and JoJo hanging out. Seven-day percentage of EOS by next week. I said 6.5%. Joe said 10%. He was optimistic, and he was right. 11.17%. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's like the strength I like my beers. Anything <laughs> lower than that is not worth it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, good on you, JoJo. Good on you for your virtual brew. Moving on to our question of this week. What will be the 24-hour volume of F? on next week's show and the 24 hour volume today was 1.55 billion so we going uh, up in volume on f we going down on volume on f what do we think joe i think we're gonna be at uh 1.72 okay billion <laughs> Billion dollars. <laughs> Run. Give me 1.65. Interesting. Uh, a million. Million. Not, not get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, I want to, you know what? There's no flipping with that, Run. Nah. I want to say <laughs> something, something cray happens and, uh, you know, people start trading it. So I'm going to go with uh, we, we jump over 2 billion. So I'm going to say 2 billion. Let's go. That would be awesome. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> well, let us know your answer in the comments down below, and we'll see who is the closest, and we will see who gets the virtual brew. Maybe we should 3D print these virtual brews to make them physical brews and send them to people. Who knows? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe, hey, if you're right, I will find a, virt a virtual physical brew for you, and I'll send it to you. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys. Uh, that's the Crypto Brew Show. Uh, JoJo, any last-minute thoughts, man? Abracadabra. Abra I'm out. <laughs> You're still there, though. You're still there. Uh, uh, Ron, I know, I know. Ron, what you got? Yeah. Hey, um, everyone, crypto is slowly, slowly, Napa move, coming out of that bear market. So keep your eyes open, get your uh, favorite projects and watch them, set your alerts and all that. You're ready. You're ready. I like it. Keep your eyes open and your glasses filled. And I don't mean the glasses Joe's doing right now. I mean, yo, drinking, you're drinking carafes. You know what I'm saying. Alrighty, guys. Uh, this has been the Crypto Brew Show. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe below for more show. We will see you next week. Cheers. Peace.